My name is Steph Halmos. I'm a visual artist. I'm based here in Brooklyn. And over the next seven minutes, I'm not going to talk about geniuses per se. I'd like to talk about the word genius. And uh, specifically, I'd like to talk about some beef I have with this word. Uh, so hold on to your hats. <laughs> um, but what really troubles me about the word genius is the fact that throughout history, it has almost exclusively been ascribed to men. Um, that's not going to fly. That's not going to work, I think, moving forward. So uh, we're going to attempt to talk about it today. Um, and the, the kind of boilerplate uh, synopsis of what you know, I'm going to discuss is that genius is gendered. Behind me is a snapshot of the first 20 or so names on a list of 100 people largely considered to be the greatest minds of all time. And these are uh, thinkers throughout history across various fields, and they're ranked by the uh, importance of their idea and also on the impact they had on the world. Um, now, of the 100 people on this list, there are only four people of color, and there is only one single woman included. This list is also, in part, ranked by voters like you and I. So I think that one woman on the list is in the top 20. She might be up here. It's Marie Curie, oh, in case you're curious. <laughs> I'm funny in the morning. So um, the, the problem of uh, the cultural acceptance of brilliance um, as a male attribute is so profound, in fact, that a recent study done in 2016 took 700 men and women, mostly in their 30s, and they found that people believed ideas that came about like a light bulb were more exceptional than those that were nurtured like seeds, but not if the person that was the inventor was a woman. If it was a woman who was the inventor, then nurtured like seeds was, in fact, more exceptional. In other words, we still have to deal with a deeply problematic gender stereotype that men are brilliant and women are nurturing, OK? So where does that leave me? <laughs> I am a 34-year-old female artist in the 21st century. And in the 21st century, the question that I have for everybody is, how do we nudge this word forward to meet us where we are now? Because all of us in this room can agree that the word genius and the idea of brilliance doesn't belong to one single gender. Women can be light bulbs, right? I mean, women can be lightning. Just ask my wife when I'm having a bad day. It gets nuts. So I got to say, in the you know, spirit of full transparency, I don't have the answer to this question. So let's set the bar low so I can just step right over it over the next couple minutes. I don't have the answer. I really don't. All I know is that in 2009, when I first began graduate school, and I had mostly female colleagues, we pretty much only talked about male artists. And it's continued in the years since, having worked in the studios of some of these famous male artists. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out kind of how to contend with this in my career as I'm moving forward. So this is me covered in schmutz, because I make sculptures, and it's a hazard of the trade. And one of the ways that I ended up making sculptures was because of the problem that I found with this word genius. Now, what I'm doing in my studio is kind of a new project, so uh, bear with me. For now, I'm going to call my studio the Parallel Universe, OK? The Parallel Universe is over here. And even though it's existing in the same time and place, the rules I'm working on within my studio, a place I've carved out in the world for myself to find some autonomy and kind of understand better definitions, in this parallel universe, I have decided that it is a space with a history that has been written by womankind. So as I go, I'm giving my parallel universe a history where women laid the political foundation, where women are the driving force of the economy, and women comprise the visual canon. That is my parallel universe, and I get to write it, right? Now, <laughs> the parallel universe exists in my studio. And the sculptures that I'm making in my studio right now, under this kind of set of rules that I've created, are representatives or let's call them relics of this alternate history. So here's an example of a sculpture that I've just made. It's called Broken Monolith. 
And it is a reference point of the idea of the column as first something that was structural, it kept the building up, and then later it became something that proved grandiosity and importance and is often seen in a lot of political buildings throughout history, right? And here it's been broken up and chopped up and, uh, and it can be swapped in and out depending how big or tall the structure is that it has to support. So there's an example, and then another piece that I've just been working on is called Trophy with 26 Petals, and it kind of uh, pokes fun at, it's got this kind of vagina on top. <laughs> it's got a vagina on top, I'm just gonna say it as it is, okay? <laughs> it's got a vagina. <laughs> so it's this kind of um, old, kind of aged trophy that I've made, and it's got 26 petals sprinkled around it, uh, each indicative of a mile of a marathon, um, poking fun at kind of the idea of athleticism and, and how uh, masculinity and athleticism were so closely tied for such a long time. So now, getting back to where we are right now. I'm not saying that the work I make in my studio is genius by any stretch of the imagination or the definition that we understand it together in this room. Not at all. In fact, 50% of what I do in my studio is fail. What I am saying is that in my parallel universe, <laughs> failure and genius are connected. Feelings and genius are connected. Empathy and genius are connected. Ferocity, whimsy, moxie, silliness, anger, my period, everything, everything is genius. Because in my studio, genius is defined only by me. And that's important. That's a method of me finding some autonomy under the oppression that I feel this word has kind of carved out for us. So, back here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we need to discredit great thinkers throughout history. That's not at all what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying is, in order for us to bring this word into the 21st century where we all can take part in it, we need to give it a much broader definition. We have to figure out how to make it inclusive. And we need to understand that the definition or the ideas that make one thing important are, are just too narrow right now. Basically, genius has been given one thumbprint. And my argument would be, we need to give it a million more. We need to give it thumbprints, like it just, <laughs> just a million impressions and much stranger ones than it's had in the past. And that's it. Thanks.